Seattle, Washington, Fox Sports Net presents Pac-10 Basketball. Today, from Bank of America Arena at Heck Edmondson Pavilion, it's the number 13 ranked team in the nation, the UCLA Bruins and the Washington Huskies. And hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Marcus Johnson. UCLA is in the tournament. Right now, they're playing for the highest seed possible. But the last three years, they have come to Seattle. They have come with the better team. And all three years, they have lost to the Huskies. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Steve. And the Huskies are going to make this an emotional basketball game. It's senior day. Hey, they're going to turn it into a run-and-gun playground, have some fun, loosey-goosey kind of affair. The Bruins had better be ready to play some basketball today. Well, one guy in the Bruins that will not let down is their senior, Earl Watson. He's been their emotional leader and he will be starting his final regular season game and he has started every game in his career. He has started every game and has never missed a practice in four years at UCLA but he is the leader of his Bruin basketball team. He's averaging about 14 points, five assists a game, a great defensive player. He can knock down the outside shot. Earl Watson wants to finish his Pac-10 career with a big bang. You know that. Watson is the right now in the Pac-10. Maybe the future is Curtis Allen. He's one of the quickest point guards in the nation. Yeah, it, quickness is his middle name. Curtis Allen is a great ball handler, a great assist guy. Averages almost 12 points a game. Had a stretch of about seven games where he was in double figures every single game. As you mentioned, he is the future. His outside shooting can be up and down, but he is a guy that can really push the ball up the floor, and that's what the Huskies want to do today. It is Allen and the Huskies. Watson and the UCLA Bruins. The Bruins' victory might gain them a number two seed in the Pac-10 in the NCAA tournament. Meantime, Matt Barnes can help lead them at power forward and Will Perkins will be the man for the Huskies. It comes your way next on Fox Sports Net. I once dreamt there was a place where I could be whatever I wanted to be. I could dance, write, and play. I can help save lives. I can help people understand. I can even make things no one has ever seen. I once dreamt there was a place. UCLA, where great futures begin. Rugged, tough, the Rhino is built to take grueling off-road abuse. And so can Rhino Lining's Tough Stuff truck bed liners. If you work your truck hard, then you need a Rhino Lining sprayed-on polyurethane lining to protect your truck bed. Rhino Linings is the world's leading sprayed-on liner company. Their Tough Stuff liner sprayed on up to a quarter inch thick is virtually indestructible. Verizon Wireless, we didn't just create affordable coast-to-coast -coast calling plans with no roaming or long-distance charges. We created an entirely new kind of wireless communications company. Single rate, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. Napkins. says any food left unattended is community property. It's so raw. In the land of burgers, the flame broiled whopper is king. takes a certain beer to forgive a fresh Hood Canal oyster. <laughs> For the Bruins, coached by Steve Lavin, they will go with the front line of Matt Barnes, who's played very well of late. Dan Gadzurek, 11 points per game, and Jason Capono, their leading scorer, at over 17. The backcourt, Billy Knight has been hot outside of late, and Earl Watson has been their leader throughout, averaging almost 15 points per game. Steve Lavin is their coach. He is one of only four coaches to lead his team to three sweet 16s the last four years. He hopes to go even farther this season. 
Now for the Washington starting lineups, their front line will be all seniors. Will Perkins, their leading scorer at 13. Greg Clark and Thalo Green, their second leading scorer at just under 11. Backcourt, seniors Brown and Johnson. Brian can really go deep. And Michael Johnson, probably their best three shooter at 40% per game. Bob Bender played in two Final Fours with the national champion Indiana Hoosiers in 76 and later with the Duke Blue Devils in 1980. And how about your key matchup, Marcus? Well, let's take a look at it. Take a look at the Bruins in the, in the circle getting off. But the key matchup, Matt Barnes has played terrific basketball as of late for the season, 12 points a game. You see what he's done in this last couple of ball games, almost 22 points a game. Will Perkins, Mr. Double-Double, 13 points, 7 rebounds. He's got 10 double-doubles to tie Avi's story of Arizona State for the Pac-10 lead. Main time for UCLA, this is Steve Lavin's fifth year. He has led the Bruins to the NCAA tournament every year. And we talked with him before the ball game about preparing for the big show. Our final weekend in Pac-10 play, including Washington's game today with us, uh, is the equivalent of our conference tournament. Uh, this is our tune-up, and we need to be hitting on all cylinders. We need momentum going into the tournament. We need to be efficient offensively and play with great intensity defensively because this is the last dress rehearsal before we open up uh, the real show and we take this thing to the NCAA tournament. Steve Lavin's team has been hot. They have won nine of their last ten games since the 29-point loss at California, but the only loss of those ten was to the number one team in the nation, the Stanford Cardinal, by just six points. Now, the Bruins have won 24 of the last 29 meetings in this series. The Huskies, we talked about, have won the last three games at Seattle, and all three UCLA teams were ranked. Washington, meantime, has really struggled. They've lost eight games in a row and 11 of 12. This is a team that has a long way to go, but Bob Bender feels like he has a recruiting class that could help out dramatically next year. This is a panoramic 360-degree photograph that is being uh, taken by Rich Clarkson, my old friend from the Topeka Daily Capital in the state of Kansas. He has worked for Sports Illustrated, National Geographic, one of the most respected photographers in the world. There is Barbara Hedges, the athletic director here in Washington. As she gets set to watch Washington and their bid to upset UCLA, who right now has a number five RPI. And Marcus, when you take a look at what has happened this weekend, Michigan State losing to Penn State, Indiana beating high seeds Wisconsin and Illinois, Hawaii beating Fresno State, hit over Syracuse, on and on. UCLA feels like they can get a two seed somewhere. Baylor beating Iowa State. I mean, it's just yeah. been a, a crazy week of upsets, and you're right for the Bruins. They are, they're in a perfect position to secure a number two seed. Who knows where and what region, but that's kind of beside the point. You get a number two seed, you're helping yourself a lot in terms of advancing in the tournament. But first things first, they've got to take care of business today. That is Tim Gabatero. He is one of the lead officials. Don McAllister will join him, and Ron Filson. The Bruins in blue. The Huskies in white, Barnes, Capono, Gadzurek, Knight, Watson on the floor for UCLA. Washington with Perkins, Clark, Green, Johnson, and Brown. And Perkins wins the tap. The game that you just cannot take for granted. I mean, a guy like a Thalo Green, he's had some great games against the Bruins. Brown misses his first three. But as you said, Washington will play it free and easy. But you have to also understand that UCLA can come out and jump on this basketball team early. Their confidence has got to be low. They're trying to stay out of the cellar in the Pac-10. They win this game today, Washington, and they tie or go into a three-way tie for ninth place. So, I mean, you jump on them early, you hurt their confidence, and hopefully you can take them out of the game if you're UCLA. If you're Washington, you're Lucy Goosey, you're having fun. It's senior day, you got five seniors on the floor, and the buzzword for you is just have a good time and I guess it's, I guess it's more than a word the, the buzz phrase mm -hmm. have a good time have fun enjoy yourself meantime problems with the 35 second shot clock and remember the Bruins on Thursday almost fell to Washington State they were down by 11 in the first half to the Cougars came back to tight at the halftime 
they were tied with the Cougars at six different occasions in the second half and then finally ripped away a 16 to 2 run at the end and Steve Lavin's team escaped with their 21st victory of the year but he said it is our postseason tournament yeah, it yeah. is like our tune up and in, in that game against Washington State it was good to see Jason Capono he got, got up 19 shots he had won about two or three games in a row where he did not reach double figures and field goal attempts and that's unexcusable for a great shooter like Jason Capono in his defense though against Cal Stanford the week before he had that terrible cold yeah, yep and there is Gadzurik inside his foul and the personal will go against Will Perkins will going with a new look usually he had the cornrows tight to his head now he brings it all out for the final game it's a natural explosion he's got the afro <laughs> working Gadzurik who shoots right around 50 percent just under 49.6 will miss the first foul shot this is a team that a lot of opponents hope they do not have to face in round one of postseason UCLA yeah, again the 35 left. second shot clock out kaput well you said let's play <laughs> yeah, free and easy exactly let's play without a clock hey we don't need that thing we don't need no staking clocks. They need the Bruin fans who are chanting each second when Michael Wright was at the foul line right. for Arizona a couple <laughs> of weeks ago. <laughs> it's Stanford. They can do the 35 second clock. The Stanford fans picked up on a Thursday night in Palo yeah, Alto. They were much too fast. Yeah. I thought the UCLA fans were accurately doing yes, the yes. one Mississippi, two Mississippi, but it was more like Stanford fans were doing. One Iowa, two Iowa, three Iowa. Yep. Now yeah, problems here. You figure you got them all sorted out. And then as soon as they do the beautiful picture, 360 degrees of heck Ed. They say they're ready to play. Washington again with only three victories in Pac-10 play and UCLA with only three losses. Bruins in their full court pressure. They want to assure that the game is paid and played at a rapid pace. Palo Green is fouled. He will be at the free throw line for two shots. And I tell you, Thalo Green, <laughs> he has played well against the Bruins during his career. I mean, I don't know how well he's played against other teams around the conference, but when he sees that Bruin blue and gold, his eyes just light up here. He attacks the glass. Dan Gadzurik gets the early foul. And remember when Gadzurik got in foul trouble against Stanford, which causes a lot of problems for UCLA inside. They don't have a lot of depth in terms of big people coming off the bench. TJ Cummings would be, I guess, be their backup center. And he's about 6'7, six, 6'8, six, about 220 pounds. Huskies take the early lead. Watson being controlled by Brian Brown. Husky straight man-to-man -man defense, kind of a containment man-to-man, -man, not a lot of pressure out top. That's Capona with the quick release as he came off the screen set by Matt Barnes. Green almost called for traveling. Greg Clark goes inside. Perkins can't hold on to it. And it'll be UCLA basketball. Yeah, I'm not so sure Green didn't come down before he passed the basketball, but the point is moot. The Bruins force a turnover with their pressure. Marcus, if you're Coach Lavin, what do you want to see in this final two? Well, I'd like to really establish Dan Gadzirk. I think you're going to need him playing well in the tournament. He's guarded by a smaller player, Will Perkins. Go after Will Perkins get Dan Gadzirk the basketball. And Capono, who is usually a fine passer, throws it too high for Billy Knight. And that is their second turnover. And also, I mean, you'd like for this game, you'd like for it to be a lopsided kind of kind of an affair where you can play some of your guys on the bench because you, you know during the tournament there's going to be not a whole lot of playing time for your bench crew. Well, the game starts out as if both teams are just trying to, to feel out each other. I mean, Stanford and Arizona this past Thursday at Fox Sports, and that was a game that began with unbelievable emotion and intensity. Michael Johnson missing the three. Will Perkins with the putback misses. Gad Zurich, there he is with the rebound. Billy Knight for a three. He has come on since his great game at Stanford about a month and a half ago. And a great find by Earl Watson. And there's Billy Knight doing it 
at the offensive end as Earl Watson going to penetrate, jump in the air, look to his left, find Knight at the last second. Knight does a nice job rotating the basketball in his hands to get it properly set and bearing a jump shot and then picks up an offensive foul at the, def at the defensive end. You want to make sure, as Coach Lavin talked about, this is the tune-up. This is like a, a postseason tournament, conference tournament for UCLA. This is your opportunity to fine-tune your offense, to tweak your defense, do what you need to do to get tournament, tournament ready. Steve Lavin taking over the storied program. Matter of fact, they have won 20 games for the 13th consecutive season. Another winning year at UCLA. 53 consecutive winning seasons on Westbrook. Well, there's the point, man. Matt Barnes with his long arms causing problems on the inbounds, and now he picks up the basketball. And another skip pass that is too tall for a Bruin, and Steve Lavin just stands with his hands on his hips as if to say, hey, fellas, pick up the pace. I mean, the, yeah, the ball is just taking off. Like a Rick and Keel fastball. Hey, stop. <laughs> I understand he looked good the other day. But he still hasn't thrown in a game yet. He's trying to get you ready for baseball season, partner. <laughs> the wild pitch. Yep. Watson misses the grand slam. Oh, I'm sorry. There's Gad Zurich, though, with a rip. Good to see. Big Gads active here early on. He can dominate the offensive glass. He can dominate both ends of the glass and get the Bruins in transition and get some easy buckets at the offensive end. Green to Michael Johnson. Gad Zurich with the block. Capona with a three on three as Watson left. Knight right. This is Billy. Four three missing. And Gad Zurich trying to knock it to himself. Commits the foul over the back of Will Perkins. He's getting a little over eager, and he knows that he's got smaller guys inside that he can jump over. He just can't jump through him. He picks up his second foul. He's got to hit the pine for young TJ Cummings is going to replace him. But uh, hopefully for the Bruins, you know, the two fouls won't have the same impact that they had in the Stanford, in the, uh, Stanford game. Marcus, how many teams do you think that will be in the NCAA tournament have seen this kind of 40-minute full court pressure. If you think about it, not a whole lot of teams play this way. Arkansas, of course, with Nolan Richardson, uh, 40 minutes of hell, and uh, Florida, Billy Donovan. But uh, you know, very few teams have the athleticism, one through five, to play this kind of pressure. Baylor Green with the score, cuts it to three. And that's the strength of his game. Thalo Green can shoot the outside medium range jump shot. Capono for three. Again, he had 28 tying his career high this past Thursday at Washington State. And that's a positive sign. At the, at the end of the season, Jason Capono, as we talked about, was, had a couple of bad games due mainly because of illness. Knight missing the pull up gap. Zurich out of the game, so Barnes grabbing the rebound from that low post and trying to throw it back in, and Matt will be at the free throw line. This guy has almost been the X factor when he came on and had that remarkable game last week at Stanford with 32 points. You go, oh my goodness, how good can he be? Yeah, and you know, I saw it this summer. I saw him playing against a lot of professional basketball players in the old men's gym on the campus at UCLA. And the UCLA guys would keep their team intact, and out of about seven or eight games, they would usually win about five, and Matt Barnes was a big reason why they were able to stay on the floor. Just a great slasher. If he, if he improves his medium-range jump shot, he's going to be just an incredible basketball player. D.J. Cummings missing. See, look at the arms of Barnes. He has such long arms that he can tip that rebound to himself. I mean, Perkins has a running size advantage. And he had position. Barnes inside, the easy two. He was 14 of 19 against Stanford. And Steve Lavin, for much of the game, was playing a two-man game because Barnes was so hot. He and Earl Watson, and it's something that they worked on this summer a lot together, just pairing up, working on the two-man game. And Stanford sent a bunch of different defenders at him, but they could not solve the puzzle. David Dixon in. Dixon will score. Count the basket. A chance for three. 
Now, first they have Will Perkins matched up against Dan Gadzirk. Gadzirk goes out with the two fouls, so you put in T.J. Cummings, and Bob Bender counters with David Dixon, all 300 pounds of him inside. He's going to be a load inside for T.J. You got to try and body him out of the key as best you can, but it's not going to be an easy chore. This is a big boy, Steve. Well, he knocks it down. Saw his hot start earlier this year. UCLA, though, has a five-point lead on Washington. Their top scorer, Jason Capono, hits the three. Bruins up by five. Driver starring Steve Lavin, left alone on Wooden Island with media shark circling. His only friend, a basketball Jones named Watson. He turns back every challenge to lead his team to the top five of the RPI, which must stand for remarkably positive individual <laughs> as opposed to RPI RIP excuse me <laughs> oh, <they could've> been. <laughs> which a lot of people <laughs> when they started four and four <laughs> that might happen but the, yeah he did turn it around and out of all the coaches in the country who coached five years he's got the best record that includes Ben Braun and Bill Donovan some pretty good coaches on that list Washington right now with the good defense. Now Greg Clark takes it in the lane. Perkins can't finish. T.J. Cummings right there. A lot of contact inside by T.J. Cummings and Will Perkins, but a good no call by the official. Wow. Who opened the door? Earl thought he was fired. Watson's fine. hand was hit and, yeah. and turned right at Don McAllister, one of the officials. So Don, where were you there? He's like, look, I'm no Jerry West, but... <laughs> I'm not Mark West either. I shoot, I shoot a lot better than that. Go West, young man. There is Michael Johnson being defended by Earl Watson. The Bulls try and turn up the pressure, but again, for Washington, if they get the ball inside, it's gravy in there. It is Perkins with the tip in, and it's a three-point game. I mean, David Dixon at 6'11", 300 pounds, he's going to take a couple of guys with him wherever he goes. So if you attack the offensive glass, if you're the Husky, you can get some good things inside. Nice. I like that move by Cummings because he has a guy who is, doesn't have his foot speed up. Exactly. And a big guy like that, you've got to make him move laterally. laterally. You make him move laterally, no way, no way he can gather and contest your shot. Cummings called for the foul, but he did a nice move on the much bigger David Dixon. And here it is right here. Make the big fella move. He's got him on his back. Going to turn and face, put it on the floor a couple of times, middle, and then just jump over the big guy. David Dixon just too tough for a guy that size, 6'11", 300 pounds, to gather and contest. Greg Clark. 4-3. Jason Capono played that about as well as you could play it. He contested the shot beautifully. But Clark, not known for his outside shooting, does a nice job concentrating and following through on the play. Bruins turn it right back over to Washington. Their fourth turnover. Now, see, this is not the script that Steve Lavin had in mind. You got the fans starting to get into the game. They turn it into an emotional affair here. Earl Watson going to penetrate. David Dixon does a nice job getting a hand on the basketball and knocking it off the knee of Earl Watson. But now here's that quick, quick as a cat, Curtis Allen in the ball game right now to deal with UCLA's pressure. Number 20, Allen giving it to Michael Johnson. Perkins high off the glass. No, tipped up. Capono rips it. Matt Barnes, that is his baby. That little jump hook. Get a couple of dribbles, make your defender move. Matt does a nice job squaring his body up and finishing off the shot in the paint. Every time he goes to that left shoulder with that jump hook, it's almost like an automatic two. Yep. Shot that he's really worked on. And, and, and Coach Steve Spencer works with all the board big people on that post up here. Michael Johnson now with a chance for three. And that's a bad defensive play by Earl Watson. He was trailing Michael Johnson on the play. You've got to keep your body in between your man and the ball. Here goes Michael Johnson to Earl Watson up top. He gets caught behind on the hip of Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson does the right thing. Cuts aggressively to the basket, gets the pass, and a chance for the three-point play to pull the Huskies to within one. And Earl Watson might have to come out of the game. He's playing with two fouls now. 
Yeah, Zurich with two, Watson with two. Here's Watson taking it in strong. And he could have been called for pushing off with his left hand. Very, very close. And just how much would that hurt UCLA if Earl Watson had to go to the bench this early in the first half with three fouls. The entire Washington team has only two fouls. This game has kind of a lethargic feel to it here early. It's an afternoon, 3 o'clock game here on the West Coast. So both teams still trying to shake out the cobwebs. But in the meantime, University of Washington trying to stay out of last place in the Pac-10. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. Clark, Johnson, Perkins, Allen, Dixon in the floor for the Huskies. Ray Young now in the game for UCLA. The steal by Capono. Ahead to Watson, right into the hands of Barnes, and he left hands it in. And that was the hand to go to. Will Perkins would have blocked the shot if Matt Barnes would have shot that with his right hand. Now the Bulls, once again, look at the trap, that first inbound pass, but Washington doing a good job breaking pressure. There's David Dixon, count it. Chance for one more. This is a different UCLA press than we've seen much of this year, and I think the lethargy is the reason why. Yeah, uh, they're just not as active as they normally are. Good pass inside to Double D. And the big fella out of Houston, Texas, Westbury Christian High School, Tyler Junior College, finishes off the play inside. Marcus, you and I did that USC game at Pauley Pavilion earlier this year. UCLA forced a very good Trojan team into 29 turnovers. I mean, there was just relentless pressure the entire night. But the problem for the Bruins all season long has been playing down to the level of their competition. You know, the Stanford's, the, the Cows, SC's, they come out, they're ready to play. A game like this, they take it for granted that all they have to do is show up and then Washington is going to paint their boots. Not, not happening today. Curtis Allen with the three misses. Watson with the wraparound. Now the Bruins fall back. Kind of a 2-2-1 press. Matt Barnes is usually the guy who is pressuring the basketball, but right now it's Ray Young that has the responsibility. Yeah, David Dixon has TJ Cummings on his back. Michael Johnson launches one from Casey Jacobson land. Find the logo. But he can shoot the basketball. He has not done, so, done it in his career on a consistent basis, Michael Johnson. But I saw him play in high school. He was an outstanding scorer here in the Seattle area. Ray Young inside. T.J. Cummings with a nice finish. That's twice now that Young has come down the floor, drawn the defense, and kicked. And that's a play Ray Young maybe two months ago would have tried to force something up. But he was very patient with his penetration. Going to jab left, go middle. Elevate and then just throw it over and around big David Dixon and a great job by TJ with the quick catch and finish inside so UCLA can take a five-point lead with the Cummings make TJ for us the son of the great Terry Cummings who played it to Paul and great years in the NBA and He drops it in UCLA with the lead 25 20 Earl Watson trying to do his part for the Bruins Michael Johnson trying to keep his Huskies in the game with the big three. Number 13, UCLA by five. Just a reminder, auto racing continues tomorrow across the Fox Networks from Atlanta, Georgia. Start your race day with NASCAR this morning right here on Fox Sports Net, followed by Winston Cup Racing on Fox. And then get a full wrap-up of all the day's racing action with NASCAR Victory Lane. Right back here on Fox Sports Net. It's all on the Fox Networks. Your home for NASCAR. Well, UCLA with a five-point lead, two winners of the Pac-10 already. Stanford blew out Arizona State 99-75. So Stanford, the number one team in the nation, likely with a number one seed in the tournament. They are now 28-2, and USC beat Washington State. So I believe the Pac-10 is going to get five teams in the tournament. I concur. But UCLA did a nice job going inside. Six of their first 12 field goal attempts were from three-point range. 
And once again, they try to go inside. A good defensive move by Will Perkins. Poor pass by Jason Capono. Palo Green with the baseline 12-footer. Bruins lead is cut to three. See if the Bruins continue to try and work the ball out of their one for offense inside the Dan Gadzirk. He's got the two fouls. Capono missing the three. Billy Knight right there, and he will be at the free throw line for two shots. C.J. Massingale with the foul, who just came in off the bench, the talented freshman from Tacoma, Washington. So Billy Knight, good job. Billy Knight was was a forward in high school, averaged 10 rebounds a game. Watch him sandwich in between the two freshman point guards, Allen and Massingale, to get the offensive rebound, draw the foul inside. Rebounding is like riding a bike, Steve. You just never forget, you know, once you learn how to do it properly, it's just always there with you. You never forget it. Is that why I keep falling off my bike? <laughs> but you rebound and get back up and go at it again. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Billy Knight, I mean, this is a guy who is heated up just at the right time. I thought this might have been a lost season for him. He's another guy watching this summer. It looked like he was going to be a major part of the Bruins offense. And uh, did really, wow. The Knight is knocked down by Taylor Green. Yeah, Zurich's back in the game with two fouls, joining Cummings and Knight with Ryan Bailey. Also in the game with Earl Watson. And what's the over and under of yeah, Zurich picking up that third foul? Like uh, about 25 seconds? Okay, we'll keep the clock on. Yeah, he's a guy that you don't, I don't know, I would gamble leaving him in the game. Gets much time left here in the first half because he is all over the place. Dan Gadzirk with his nice job going after the defensive rebound here. Penetration by Allen. Gadzirk going to challenge the shot, almost gets a piece of it, and then Will Perkins all on the back of Gadzirk. So that's a good job of challenging without making contact with Gadzirk to avoid that third foul. Seventh team foul by Washington. That will send UCLA to the free throw line for one plus the penalty. And that was the second foul on Will Perkins. So Dixon will replace Greg Clark. Also coming in Ben Coffey. So Green, Coffey, Dixon, with Massingale and Allen, the two freshmen in the backcourt. C.J. Massingale just lost the ball, and Gad Zurich takes the board. Matt Barnes. That's the one area of his game that you said you really want to see him improve on. And, and he will. He, he is a very diligent worker during the offseason, working on weaknesses in his game. He realizes that, and he'll put in the work this offseason. But that's, that's the kind of shot. He's quick enough with the quick first step that you, know, you have to give him a cushion. You have to respect that. And if he can knock down that shot, it's going to open up a whole lot of things for him offensively. Allen has it knocked free, gets it back. Shot clock right now at 11. Curtis with the pull-up, misses. A little bit out of control, Curtis Allen. He's got that speed. But sometimes he doesn't harness properly out on the floor. They swing it to Billy Knight. He misses the three. Barnes with the rebound. They go right back to Matt, and he'll miss the hook. Yeah, I got, oh, wow, Billy Knight just banged his hand on the floor. And the jump ball is called. But that time, Barnes got caught too far underneath the backboard for that turn the left holder turn the left shoulder jump hook to be effective that's marcher he's a little bit too far underneath so that shot's not going to go but then billy knight Thalo green gets tangled up and wow watch billy knight number three watch his head hit the floor bam in the key and he has to be a little wobbly after that but he stays in the ball game Watson comes out. Capona. There's the right hand hook that does not go. Ben Coffey with the rebound. Washington just hanging around, hanging around. Still eight minutes to play first half. I tell you, you know, he, he plays good basketball against UCLA. And 
his last game as a collegiate player. You know he wants to come out here and leave an impression. Washington with that attitude, if you got nothing to lose, try anything. Body on your friend. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's, let's go back in. What are you talking about, man? The hotties are just coming out. Hey, ladies, little help? Nothing like the Northwest Beach for keeping the Henrys cold. How's my hair? Come on. When we launched Verizon Wireless, we didn't just create affordable coast-to-coast -coast calling plans with no roaming or long-distance charges. We created an entirely new kind of wireless communications company. Single rate, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. UCLA by two over Washington. Last year, Matt Barnes only averaged five points per game, but he played well in the NCAA tournament. I mean, we would see him shine this year. Yeah, you know, and he does a great job of just slashing to the basket, going from right to left as you're facing the hoop. And Earl Watts, a nice pass. Watch the left-handed finish. Put it in the right hand. Will Perkins would have blocked the shot. But does a great job actually going left to right as you're facing the basket. He's just so quick. He beats the defender, gets a step on him, and if you pass him the basketball anywhere in the painted area, that quick release jump hook kind of shot put jumper that he shoots is going to go in. He's down the low block. They look green will defend him. Get Zurich, Barnes, Ray Young, Billy Knight, and Ryan Bailey. And a foul to call on Billy Knight. And the Bruins continue to be careless with the basketball. Their passing has been nothing short of atrocious out here. Right there, Billy Knight tried to feed the high post and then compounds the mistake by committing the foul on Thalo Green. And that will bring Earl Watson back in the game. But Thalo Green at the free throw line with a chance to tie this game with one plus the penalty. And you got Moose Bailey on the floor. Also, just to kind of shore up the ball handling. That is the one deficiency for UCLA at this stage. But Thalo Green, as a redshirt freshman, had 12 points in his then career high against UCLA. And as you talked about in the open, this team, this Washington Husky team, has beaten the Bruins the last three times they've come to Seattle. Well, their seniors have 20 of Washington's 25 points. It's senior day. Yep. <laughs> Lay it all on the boards. Ray Young. That one almost picked off by Taylor Green. Ryan Bailey blocked by David Dixon. Huskies can take the lead. Here's Ben Coffey. He will give the Huskies the lead. Huskies in transition. Who let the dog down? <laughs> and Earl Watson had to back off of Coffey because he did not want to pick up the additional foul. The first lead since 2 0. Got Zurich to the right off his foot for Coffey. And so the fans are into this game at this point. Green. Similar story against Washington State for UCLA. They got down by as much as 11 points in the first half. Playing careless basketball. Wow. They're dribbling it off their knees, off their feet, off their elbows, turning it over, and the Huskies are taking the lead. But Moose Bailey, I mean, you know, David Dixon is 6'11". You're not going to get that shot off without him blocking it. They do a good job of transition. Ben Coffey finishes off at the other end. Got to be a little bit more creative. 
has it knocked out by Bailey. 23 seconds left in the shot clock. I mean, this is a, this is a test of wills for UCLA. I mean, you've got to stay focused. You've got to be intense. You've got to compete. Almost like they're playing the first half, like they want to get back on that plane, headed back to LA, and prepare for the NCAA tournament. Goaltending the Huskies in dead last place in the Pac-10 conference with the lead of five over UCLA. And this is a Husky outfit that has lost eight games in a row by an average of 20 points per game. They had an earlier losing streak of nine in a row. I mean, so they've, they've had their stretches of bad performances, but you wouldn't know it from watching them play this game. But again, we talked about the emotion, the, the emotional factor, how that was going to play into this game for these seniors. Watson forcing it, rolls out to Taylor Green. is a crazy thing you get a, a step quicker you jump about five inches higher your shot all of a sudden looks more pure and true guys that can shoot start knocking down jump shots you know this happens this time of the year there's brian brown before the shot i think ben coffee set an illegal screen so UCLA will have it down at their end. But you see this happen so many times. I mean, Michigan State, I think, was the best team in the country. They lose to Penn State, and the Spartans, Tom Izzo even said, played terribly. Yeah. Again, and, you know, I, I just think it's, it's if we talk about it, these postseason tournaments, I mean, this time of year, you've got, for the Bulls, it's almost like they've got their, their position right. pretty much clinched. And so you have this major letdown, but as a coach from Steve Lavin, you cannot afford to let that happen because there will be some carryover. If you don't carryover, you have carryover carry in the first round of the tournament, then you're done. That's why they call it March Madness. It can drive a coach man. Yep. Baylor Green getting a chance to shoot. Baylor was on fire from that left side of the floor. Everything he's made has been on the left side, about 18 to 15 feet. Another careless pass for all watching. A 12 nothing run by the Huskies. Look at these Huskies. And they've got it again. Look at the Huskies. Diamond on the floor. Huskies hustling. Brian Brown. They want to go out with the bang. Their final game of their collegiate career for a lot of these guys. Dixon Watt. And you know these schools in the North and West hate, hate L.A. schools anyway. <laughs> they don't feel like they get the respect they deserve tucked away up here in this little corner of America. There is now an energy tax in the Pacific Northwest to pay for California's <laughs> exactly. energy that we need so badly, our electricity. Thank you very much. <laughs> but David Dixon doing a nice job playing center field against Matt Barnes. Nice take by Barnes, though. That's what he did against Stanford. He was just so much quicker than the bigs that Stanford sent at him. Yeah, no one could guard him. They threw Taylor Johnson at him. He's a pretty decent guy defensively in terms of foot speed, but he was still able to get around him. There's the turnover forced by Billy Knight right back at Brian Brown. Michael Johnson. Open right side, gets Zurek behind his back to Billy Knight. Oh, we'll see that again. I hope never. never. <laughs> <laughs> but a foul called inside, I believe, on David Dixon. But yeah, Zurich, that was pretty good. I don't think he was trying to be fancy. He was running full speed. That pass was intended for Capono. And that was really the only way he could deliver that basketball to Billy Knight. So a good bit of improvisation by Dan Gazzurri. You hope never. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you, know, you get your big guy running. And Dan Gazzurri is the fastest guy on this UCLA team. I mean, he's, he is the speech. He's got the small feet, kind of small hands with a size 13 shoe. I know that's not to a lot of people, but for a seven-footer, it's relatively small. UCLA coming back after they were down by eight points, but Thalo Green leading the way, and the Huskies with the lead. At the University of Washington Athletics Department,
Washington with a 34-30 lead on the number 13 team in the nation. The Bruins trying to tighten their defensive pressure. They do, but I want to show you like a remarkable reaction by Dan Gadzirk. The number 23, Michael Johnson, fellow of the player, is going to get a hand on the basketball there. Gadzirk, almost in one motion, corrals the ball in, throws it behind his back, and then Billy Knight draws the foul inside. So that, that is a, a terrifically athletic play by 6'10", Dan Gadzirk. Billy Knight, late defending the inbounder. And one of the contact, a foul call on Billy Knight, no foul call. Michael Johnson goes off left and pushes that lead back to six. They say Michael Johnson, one of the most prolific scorers in the state of Washington. High school basketball history, almost 2,300 points in his career at Ballard High School, and a lot of them just medium range jump shots. He has eight. Gadzor got deep. Drops it off the glass to cut it to four. I wish they would go to him a lot more than they do. I mean, I know they're trying to get some continuity in their offense. They're going to get everybody touching the basketball. You don't want to go right into the post, but he's got great position that deep inside early. Give him the basketball. Johnson with the pull up misses. And Capona went over the back of David Dixon. And for Jason, that should be his first foul of the game at Wilbur. There's the trap out top. Michael Johnson going to catch the ball on the wing. Split the two defenders. Two dribbles and up. And almost got that the ball. But give the big fella David Dixon some credit. Doing a nice job working the offensive glass inside. Dixon only a 35% foul shooter. They are dead last as a team in the conference. Under 60% this year. Gadzura comes out and Cummings back in. And they thought David Dixon would come in and be a much better basketball player, but he's had trouble, obviously, keeping his weight down. Nine points a game as a starter, three points a game coming off the bench. So I'm sure when he makes his case to Coach Bender, he's like, hey, look, I score three times as much starting than I do coming off the bench. Coach, what's up? But he's got to get in better condition, and hopefully this offseason he will work to attain that goal. Well, maybe that is a challenge from the co coach. Lose 30 pounds, and we will start you. Green with the steal. Baylor's had a wonderful first half with 14 points and quality defense. Brian Brown will miss. Cummings tried to tap it to himself. Instead, Greg Clark went over the back, and Clark will pick up the personal. And that's at least two steals for Thalo Green. I mean, he is just so active and loves, again, playing against UCLA. But the Bruins very careless with the basketball. Matt Barnes, you got to protect the basketball. He exposes the ball. Thalo comes up with it, and the Huskies are off and running. So with all this momentum swinging Washington's way with all the good plays they've been making, the Bruins are still only down four. Thanks, Ready, fellas. No lockup. One. Coming up at the half, talk about the Pac-10 tournament, the bids and seeds, where the Pac-10 could go. Wooden Award flashback about Michael Jordan and first half highlights and stats of this game. But the last time Washington led at the half was more than a month ago, February 3rd, against Washington State. Well, the thing that I'd be concerned about about Steve Lavlin is the carelessness with the basketball, passing, dribbling the ball. Now, this is against the last place team in the pack. Yeah, Thalo! Thalo Green's got 16 points. And there's his mom. She's delighted as the son plays in her last game, in his last game with the Huskies. At 16 points is the most points by a Husky and a half this year. Cummings again gets it down to four. Well, this is a tape Thalo will be able to show his, his grandkids in years to come. Dixon on the other end of breaking. The full court press like it's a sieve. And Earl Watson just bounced off of him like he was a mosquito on an elephant inside. Knight fakes the three and walks. Quick shuffle of the feet by Billy Knight, but speaking of left-handers, Thalo Green. Inside, working, working, offensive rebounding, tipped it to himself, and then does a nice job finishing off the play inside, and then right here pushing, pushing, pushing. He's got Dixon. 
Oh, excuse me, Michael Johnson ahead to Dixon inside for the easy score. So Thalo not only scoring, but initiating the fast break, playing tough defense, doing just about everything the Huskies need. 133 left in the first half, and UCLA down to the last place Huskies. It's senior day on the Seattle campus. Thalo Green having a remarkable first half with 16 points already. Yeah, doing just about everything right there. Tough defense comes up with the steal. A deadly medium range jump shooter, especially from the left side. And then doing a nice job running the floor in transition. Thalo keeping the Huskies alive. Where to get the name Thalo? Well, from his father, Sandy, who is a painter. And there's Sandy. And he loved the color deep deep aqu aquamarine and the uh, color of deep aquamarine is thalo so he named his son thalo green a lot better than aquamarine green mm -hmm. and now the huskies patient on their offense jason flowers in the game for ucla to apply a little bit more pressure out top and maybe take care of the basketball a little bit better for ucla i think coach lavin just wanted energy on the floor and the Bruins with 13 first-half turnovers. Good passing by Washington, breaking down that Bruin defense that has eroded here in the first half. And that will push the lead to eight, and it could be nine with the free throw by Clark. And here's some of that quickness we talked about in our open. Curtis Allen does a nice job. Finds Greg Clark inside. Greg Clark. Nothing to do but to catch and finish and draw the foul. You've seen these kind of games in the past. If you take a team for granted long enough, all of a sudden they have the feeling they can win. Here's Capono for three. Washington had their biggest lead. And Capono said, take that. That's cold-blooded. Come down and, and have the confidence to pull up that long, that quickly in your half-court offense. And now the Bruins trying to intensify this pressure out top. Got to protect the basket in doing so. Michael Johnson misses Cummings rebounds. There's Capona. He fakes the three this time. Cuts inside to Barnes and gets the assist. It's like a little light came on the Bruins' heads like they realize how hard they have to play in order to come out with a victory today. This is not going to be an easy task. Washington is just not going to give it to them. Ten points for Barnes, but Jason Capona with back-to-back -back nice plays. Yeah, this is a nice job here. A little show and go. The three-pointer that he made on the previous offensive play set that play up. Got the defender to bite, penetrated, drew the defense, kicked it to a wide open Matty Barnes. See Steve Lavin coaching, coaching him, coaching. He knows that he's got to try and get his guys to stay focused, keep playing hard, keep competing. Well, Marcus, to find out all the latest news and happenings in the Conference of Champions, log on to their official website at www.pac10.org and get up to date on all the schools and their sports in the Pac-10 Conference. And just a reminder, ticket information for the upcoming 2002 men's and women's Pac-10 basketball tournament is also available online, so log on and check it out. It will be at the Staples Center for the next three years. Put those tickets now. It will also be televised on Fox Sports Net. Proud to have it. Brown, Clark, Johnson, Allen, Coffee on the floor for the Huskies. Here's Ben Coffee. The foul. going to be on Jason Flowers, I believe. And Mr. Coffee shoots the air ball from the right side. Michael Johnson did a good job on the weak side, getting inside position on Jason Flowers and draw the foul to get a couple of free throws. Michael Brown. Yeah, he's uh, he's had a very had a very productive game against USC. 11 points in 26 minutes. And a great medium range jump shooter has never really found his stroke as a collegiate player. Shooting right around 40 percent for his career, and I think everyone who saw him play in high school just figured he would be much, much better than that. And only 60 from the foul line. And that's the telling stat. He ain't just a great outside shooter that he is or that he was in high school. You expect a lot better. Capono kicks it right to a Husky. Allen gets it ahead to Johnson, who sends it home right at the buzzer. Steve Lavin with a lot to talk with his team about at halftime. Again, careless ball handling. Capono with the Pele soccer kick. Gets the Huskies in transition. And right before the halftime buzzer, 
Michael Johnson gives the Huskies a seven point lead. 47 40 Washington over a stunned number 13 team in the nation the UCLA Bruins Barnes got it inside but Phalo Green 16 too much in the first 20 minutes in Seattle Washington. The last place team in the Pac-10 conference the Washington Huskies with a surprising lead over number 13 UCLA. All year long during the college basketball season, Fox Sports Net will be giving you a look at one of this year's candidates for the John R. Wooden Player of the Year Award, as well as winners from the past. It's time once again to take a look back at one of the past winners for this prestigious award. Fox Sports Net and the Los Angeles Athletic Club bring you this Wooden Award winning moment. On March 29, 1982, an unknown freshman guard became a star. In the final seconds of the NCAA championship game, Michael Jordan hit the game-winning shot, giving Dean Smith his first national title. That shot was a precursor to an outstanding career. In Jordan's sophomore season, the six-foot-six-inch human highlight reel averaged over 20 points and five rebounds a game. Then in his junior year, he averaged over 19 points and five rebounds a game. As a back-to-back first-team All-American and two-time College Player of the Year, Jordan decided to leave Chapel Hill. In the 1985 NBA draft, Jordan was selected third overall by the Chicago Bulls. Later that year, number 23 returned to North Carolina to complete his degree. The world icon known as Air Jordan hit his last NBA shot on June 14, 1998. That bucket in the NBA Finals capped the career of perhaps the greatest basketball player in history. The Silver Anniversary John R. Wooden Award will be presented live from the Los Angeles Athletic Club Friday, April 6th on Fox Sports Net. The college basketball season doesn't end until this trophy is presented. Don't forget you can vote for the player who you think will win the Wooden Award this year by logging on to thewoodenaward.com and clicking on the fan vote powered by Harris Interactive to place your votes. Also, if you would like to attend this special event, tickets are still available, so please call 213-630-5255 and get your tickets today. We saw one of the best MJs in the history of basketball, Michael Jordan. This is the MJ for the Huskies, Michael Johnson, and he has given them a seven-point lead. Ski and ride the summit at Snoqualmie. Get good quick at the Summit Learning Center. When we launched Verizon Wireless, we didn't just create affordable coast-to-coast -coast calling plans with no roaming or long-distance charges. We created an entirely new kind of wireless communications company. Single rate, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. the Northwest Beach for keeping the Henry's cold. How's my hair? When I need you, now get touched by love. A new 36 song collection of the most popular soft rock hits. I love you. Feel the magic of love in every song. not sold in stores so order now call toll free now for touched by love two cassettes 1998 two cds 2698 plus 495 shipping call now 
ski and ride the Summit at Snoqualmie, America's largest night skiing operation. This is Jim Rome. Next week on The Last Word, we'll break down the NCAA tournament pairings with Sherry Tarkanian, Roy Williams, and Lefty Giselle. Plus, Al Michaels joins me as part of our weekly wrap. The Last Word with me, Jim Rome, weeknights at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. Three kids. It's a very good chance that I might go to the NBA. Three lives. Just a matter of doing the right things. One dream. Basketball is my job. Prep Chicago Hoops weekdays at 5 on Fox Sports Net. Washington with a 47-40 lead over the number 13 team in the nation, the UCLA Bruins. The Bruins are already in the tournament. Right now they're playing for the highest seed possible when they are selected. They went into Thursday's game against Washington State, beat the Cougars at RPI number five. They fall into six. Stanford is number two RPI. The lowest seed they have is 34 at California. So when you look at those indications, you really get the idea that the Pac-10 Conference will have five teams into the NCAA tournament. Steve Fiziak along with Marcus Johnson. I know the Pac-10 Conference would like to see five in there. Yeah, and of those five teams, you've got some dangerous teams. Stanford obviously playing great, great basketball, but Arizona just starting to put it together. And USC, don't count them out. If they get in the tournament, which I think they will, this is a team that's starting five can compete with any starting five in the country. And we saw California just a couple of weeks ago, and you said Sean Lampley is so difficult to defend for a small or a big guy. And that's what you need in the tournament. You need a guy who can carry your team offensively. <laughs> Sean Lampley can do that. All right. Right now, UCLA is down by seven points at the break. Jason Capono, when he's had the ball in his hands, he has been sharp. He has hit a couple of threes early in the game, but Washington right now with the lead, 47-40. First half for the number 13 team in the nation, the UCLA Bruins, down by seven to Washington. Washington is dead last offensively, dead last defensively, and yet they've scored 47 on UCLA, and they have also forced 14 Bruin turnovers. We talked about him being Lucy Goosey, and the guy that's been really Lucy Goosey is Thalo Green. He's done a great job, 16 points, six rebounds, even three steals. He's had a, a career day here in the first half. He's done a nice job against UCLA. His career high is 22 already with 16. Michael Johnson with 11 and David Dixon off the bench with eight. For UCLA, Matt Barnes can be so hard to defend inside. Yeah, he's a great slasher going to the basket. Once he gets in the paint and elevates, he's almost impossible to stop. Capone's going to do a nice job drawing a couple of defenders, finding him there. But Matt Barnes has been the one consistent scorer for UCLA in this game. Five of seven floor for 10 points. Capono with eight. T.J. Cummings off the bench with seven. Billy Knight with seven. Gadzirik and Watson with four each. But way too many turnovers as Washington with a 47-40 lead. And that man, Thalo Green, with 16 first-half points. The city in the northwest, the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington. Beautiful shot of the bay and beautiful first half for Washington. 47-40 over the number 13 team in the nation. Let's check the first half stats, Marcus. First half stats, you see it for UCLA. I mean, they've got a better field goal percentage. They've out-rebounded the Huskies, but the turnovers and the points off turnovers favor Washington. That's been the difference in the game. The Bruins have got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. I know I sound like a broken record. And that's because I am. <laughs> well, UCLA's 14 turnovers is the second highest total this year in a half. They had 15 in the up. first half in the loss to Cal State Northridge. Here is Thalo Green coming right in, taking wow. a three, missing. It is knocked out by a Bruin. And Washington will keep it as Barnes, Capono, Gazurik, Knight, and Watson will start for UCLA. Washington going with Perkins, Clark, Green, Johnson, and Brown as they'll go with their all-senior lineup. That was successful to start the game. And, and that, that last poke out of bounds by two Bruins is almost like a turnover because that's a sheer possession for you. But taking care of the basketball and containing Thalo Green. Capono grabs the rebound. Green tumbles down in the husky paint. Knight wide open, and Billy will get the easy wraparound but miss it. Gadzurek 
finally sticks it back in. Wow, and those were like three point blank misses at the rim for UCLA. Not a good way to start this second half. Good job moving the basketball around the horn by the Huskies. Will Perkins with 15. Huskies in the first half, Steve, 18 field goals, 14 assists. So they're doing a good job of finding the open shooters. Well, those assists always mean easy baskets. They're too easy. Yep. Good pass inside by Barnes and Gadzurik with the finish. Along with Watson and Capono, Matt Barnes is their third great assist guy. Well, he is the best passer from the high post that they have on this basketball team, and especially feeding Dan Gadzurik on the seal play. Nice little lock inside by Gadzurik. But again, this is early in the offense. The Bruins are trying to establish the inside. This is something I thought they should have done in the first half. Instead of running off 20 seconds off the shot clock, then going to Gadzurik. He's got a decided height advantage inside. He's got a weight advantage, a strength advantage, an athletic advantage. We've got to go ahead and let him use that. Third foul on Perkins. But you can see the Bruins defensively, a lot more respect for Thalo Green in the second half than they had in the first half. But they've got to cool off Perkins, who drops his first two shots easily from 15 and 18. He's got that medium range jump shot. A whistle the foul away from the basketball. It's going to be on Perkins. It's his fourth, the fourth foul on Will Perkins, and he is hot. Nah, I didn't like that call. I, you know, I just thought it was two guys battling for position. He was trying to front Dan Gadzurik. And Bob Bender realizes it's just a, 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 a bit late to get him out of the basketball game and gives UCLA an easy two because of it. Barnes with 12 now, but Perkins, who came up to start the second half, if he gets hot, he's a guy who can beat you. Here's Michael Johnson high off the glass. When your confidence is low, that's a shot that doesn't even get close. When your confidence is soaring, off the glass, nothing but net. Let's see if they go to Gadzurich because Perkins is defending him. Watson. Again, kicks it out of bounds. Well, the ball fake, he had an open teammate at the free throw line. Gave the ball fake to try and improve the, 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 the angle for his own shot and winds up kicking the basketball out of bounds. And that's the fifth turnover for Earl Watson. He had four at halftime. That's his first one in the second half. Jason Flowers comes in replacing Billy Knight. Green is crushed by Jason Flowers, his second foul. They're just cutting up that full court press. Did a nice job of uh, the, the key to breaking this press, getting the basketball in the middle like they're doing right there, and then attacking. You know, you don't want to break the press and get passive. You want to break break the press and go at the basket strong, draw the foul as Thalo Green does on Jason Flowers. And UCLA's been pretty good when the press is, there, is at, at its most successful of keeping the basketball out of the middle. Taylor Green, a 70% foul shooter, pushes that lead to eight points. Their biggest advantage of the entire afternoon has been nine. Capone almost threw it away. Get Dan Gadzir going for the monster jam. And what he does, Gadzir, he takes the basketball behind his head to dunk the ball, but he exposes it to the defense. Good defensive play by Dixon. Watch, good offensive rebound. Now he wants to cock that thing behind his head, throw it down hard, but Thalo Green doesn't allow him to do that. He knows Dan Gadzir is not a good free throw shooter, put him at the free throw line. Sometimes, you know, it's better not to try and dunk everything when you're that close underneath the basket. Zurich, one of two, cuts the lead to seven. Bruins are hoping that the cumulative effect of this press will eventually wear down the Huskies. It did Washington State, particularly on that 16-2 run they had late in the game, breaking a tie. The steal by Johnson. And they have matched their biggest lead of the game at nine points. 
But again, very sloppy passing by the Bruins. Jason Flowers telegraphed that pass all the way. He's looking at Earl Watson. With the first dribble to the third dribble, very easy to pick off for Michael Johnson. Ryan Bailey has got the scores table likely to come in for Flowers. There was a push against Brian Brown. Look at Flowers. He tries to look off Johnson, but Johnson is just laying there waiting for him to pass the basketball. You've got to be a little bit more creative than that. Jason Capono right baseline. Stroking it. Jump shot looking good. But then see to get it out of the first trap, get it ahead, and then attack. Michael Johnson for three. They're feeling it now. They're gaining the confidence. And that's the one thing about a press. You want to try and go your opponent and then take it that quick early jump shot with the hopes that they're going to miss a good chunk of those. But the Huskies, as you're saying, that they're feeling it and they're knocking those shots down. So that makes your press a lot less effective, obviously. Capono hooks it in. He now has 12 points. They've got to find him. He has a way of making things happen. When the ball's in his hands, he's such a fine passer and an understanding of where the guys are supposed to go. A great spot-up jump shooter, but I also like him on the move when he's catching the basketball, slashing to the basket, getting into a rhythm. Good job, Bruce Bailey. Bad pass, David Dixon. It only becomes a bad pass because of the hustle of Bruce Bailey not giving up on the play, letting the passing lane. Barnes gets it back for Jason. Capono for three. Capono, Capali. Deep in the corner. And that was almost a bad pass by Matt Barnes. Fortunate to get it there. Capono does the rest. Good hands, Jason Capono. Boy, he's going good. It still belongs to the Huskies because Jason, the last man to touch it. There's a timeout on the floor. Capono, meantime, has been hot. As Washington went up by as many as nine points, Michael Johnson gave him the lead. But Capono suddenly hot, and the Bruins within four. Takes a certain beer to forgive a fresh Hood Canal oyster. Every month is unique, but only March has this much torque, this much power, and this many trucks. Because March is Ford Truck Month, and it's your chance to save big on thousands of trucks and SUVs. Get a thousand cash back or low 2.9 financing on Ford F-150, the best-selling truck in the Northwest. And check out the huge selection of Ford Super Duties with their time-proven Power Stroke Diesel. March is Truck Month, only at your Northwest Ford store. When we launched Verizon Wireless, we didn't just create affordable coast-to-coast -coast calling plans with no roaming or long-distance charges. We created an entirely new kind of wireless communications company. Single rate, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. Michael Johnson was one of the most prolific scorers in Washington State High School history, averaging 27 a game. He's having one of those nights of yesteryear. Yeah, nice job picking off the bad pass by Jason Flowers and then displaying that outside shooting ability that led him to score 2,300 points, two-time Washington State Player of the Year in high school. 17 thus far. Thalo Green was 17. The seniors are doing their job on senior day. Jason Capono leading UCLA with 15. Matt Barnes with 12. Johnson. Give him 19. Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, I mean, again, did not, has not lived up to the promise that he had coming out of high school, but he's almost making up for it in one day here, his final basketball game as a collegiate player against UCLA. He has already tied his season high with the 19 points, his career best, 22, said last year against Georgia Tech. 
Phalo Green will pick up the foul. His third personal, so Perkins has four fouls. Green, who is their top scorer in the first half, with 16 points with his third. Matt Barnes drops the first. UCLA doing a much better job on Thalo Green. Fortunate the Bruins are to get Will Perkins out of the game with his fourth foul. So now, if you can control Michael Johnson, then you have a really good chance to continue to put a dent into this Husky lead. There's the middle guy. David Dixon got it inside. A foul will be called against Ryan Bailey. Husky's doing a great job not attempting to dribble through a double team, but rather pass the ball over the double team before the pressure really intensifies on the ball handler. Once you see the double coming, get rid of the basketball. That's what they're doing. That's why the Huskies have numbers at their offensive end. Bob Bender would love to end the year on a high note. Back-to-back -back 20 lost seasons, 10 and 20 last year, 9 and 20 so far this season. Dixon with the miss, gets her off his hands out of bounds, but they say last touch by Washington. So the Husky team is, is not finished in last place. I think it's 1991 in the Pac-10 Conference. They win this game, they have an opportunity to tie for ninth. I know it doesn't sound like much. Another steal by Green is third of the game. Baylor right into the face of Matt Barnes' defense. Capona with the quick hands, grabs the miss. Yeah, Zurich trying to post up Dixon. He wasn't trying, he was, but they, yep. didn't, they didn't look inside. Nope. I mean, that's, that's what I, he's working hard to get great position, which he does. And then to be just licked off by your point guard is very frustrating for a big man. A foul against Brown. Earl Watson going to take Brian Brown left. Elevate. Mm, little bit of contact on him. Not a whole lot. That was a bailout call for Earl Watson. He tried to hang in there until there was some contact. And the official obliged him to call the foul against Brian Brown. Earl Watson, one of the leading candidates for player of the year in the Pac-10 conference, along with Casey Jacobson at Stanford and Sean Lampley of the California Golden Bears. USC won this afternoon, so did Stanford. Watson makes them both and cuts that lead to three. Once again, they got the ball in the middle, and Johnson, when he was trapped, was fouled by a Bruin. You had a bigger guy, TJ Cummings, trying to defend 40 feet away from the basket. And Johnson just used his superior foot speed to, to bait him into a foul. I got to give Dan Gedger credit. He's done a nice job not picking up the additional fouls that I thought he would. Whoa, Dr. Johnson. Michael Johnson has just tied his career best with 22 points. And he's got the long-range jumper falling today. Capona missing the three. Now, not a bad shot by Jason, but he did a, did a nice job up faking. I thought he had a nice wide open 15 footer. He did the step back move for the three pointer, wound up shooting it short. I'll tell you one thing this will be for Steve Lavin is a reminder game. A reminder, fellas, of what it's going to be like yep. in the tournament. Remember Princeton, remember Tulsa. They cannot play that way. Watch this little hesitation. Nice feed inside to Thalo Green. Thalo draws a foul on T.J. Cummings. And Dan Gadzirk, Dan Gadzirk pre prevents it from becoming a three-point play. And that is the fourth foul on T.J. Cummings, who really has had limited minutes in the afternoon. Every time UCLA cuts that lead down to three. Washington goes on a mini run. Right now they push it back to seven. Their biggest advantage of the afternoon has been nine points. Green one of two. Ray Young is fouled. They called him for traveling first. I thought that would be a hop step, Marcus. 
Because as he caught it and came down, he was bumped. That was a long jump. Right here, regular ticket on the floor. Yeah, you know, he, he, he took too many steps. He, 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 he took a little quick step first before he got into the... He was fouled before he came down. That was the question. Yeah. Had. Curtis Allen turns it over, but knocked out by Gadzurek. Curtis dribbled right to the corner of the two blue jerseys, and that was exactly the place that Bob Bender did not want him to go. And he's got to learn to control his speed and quickness. Foul. Ray Young. And Thalo's presenting problems just because of his activity inside. You know, he's not he's not a stationary target. He's moving around, not allowing himself to be blocked out easily. And as a result, he's picking up fouls against UCLA that will eventually put his team in the bonus. Well, this is not like the UCLA team I've seen this year. Their defense has been on empty. Their understanding defensively of where they're supposed to be has been miserable. Johnson behind the back bounce pass. Great clock. Yes. This game reminds me of my sophomore year, the year we won our championship with John Wooden. We came up here to Seattle and the Huskies waxed us by 30. Everything went right for him right there behind the back pass. That Billy Knight, in all intents and purposes, should have picked off. But it's out of his vision. Winds up in the hands of Greg Clark, who gets a potential three-point play. Washington, though, with their biggest lead of the afternoon, an 11-point cushion on the Bruins. Watson just wow. throws it away. Wow. Nobody home. Earl Watson leaves his feet once again. That's got to be turnover number six or seven for Earl Watson. Steve Lavin thought one of the Huskies had touched the basketball. He wanted an explanation. Finally got it and said, no, Watson just threw it out of bounds. <laughs> no coach. Just a bad pass by your point guard. Curtis Allen throws it away. Ray Young finds Watson. As poorly as UCLA has played, there is still more than enough time for them to pull this game out. They've got to take care of the basketball. They've got to stop the careless turnover and get the score. Dan Gadzork from 15. I was about ready to say that's not the shot you want. No. You need a basket. And you know, he needed he needed the kind bounce off the rim for it to go in. Look at that pass. Drops it to Massengay. Knight picks up the wild rebound. Watson knocks it home. Going right there. They're, they're, they are right back in it. Seven points down. And you can get the sense that this Washington team kind of tightening up just a little bit. Not much, but just a little. Play a little bit more tentative. Timeout, Washington. A 4 nothing run by the Bruins for Bob Bender to call timeout and collect his team's thoughts. Well, he's got his two freshman point guards on the floor at the same time. You might want to break them up. I don't know how well they'll be able to deal with this kind of a situation, but it's also good training ground for next year because, you know, this game pretty much for Washington doesn't mean a whole lot. Just a reminder, weekdays at 5 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, it's Preps Chicago Hoops. It's an inside look at the Chicago high school basketball scene featuring NBA prospect Eddie Curry. Preps Chicago Hoops, weeknights at 5 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Net. Be sure to check your local listings. Michael Johnson has spirited the return, tying his career high with 22 points. Got Grant Leap in the game for the first time also for Washington. He's a good three-shooter. Watchman doesn't have their shoot around, and all he does is stand outside that arc and take those threes. Michael Johnson, no. Watson rebounds. Once again, back screens, cut to the basket, down screens. This is what 
they want. And Barnes, that's too easy for him. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's tough on Grant Lee to check into the game and then you go against a guy like Matt Barnes, who was so athletic and already warm and into a nice flow. And that was good understanding in their one for offense who they wanted to post up. Barnes scored at will, and Mack now has 16 points to lead the team. Capono, who has scored 15, is at the scores table ready to check in. That's Zurich with the steal. Billy Knight, 4 3. He likes that shot. He knocked down that shot when they're down four or five points and need a three pointer at the right corner. Billy Knight, very comfortable right there. An 8 0 run for UCLA. Got the Bruin fans in the house with the UCLA chant going on, trying to give the Bruins some energy. Michael Johnson, no. Massingale is ripped from behind by Earl Watson in the foul call. And Michael Johnson has finally cooled off. Now, he was knocking down all those medium-range shots up until about the last two minutes of the game. And when I talk about the cumulative effect of a press, I think we're now starting to see it affect some of the Washington players, especially on their on their outside jump shots. Third foul on Watson. Massengale, the talented freshman from the Tacoma, Washington area, just a 62% foul shooter, but they feel he can be an 80% foul shooter later in his career because he was so good as a high school prepster at Mount Tahoma. One of two. Capono's left side. Watson decides to take it himself and misses. Behind you! And Brian Brown, the team, has got to come in here and settle this thing down a bit. We talked about it knocking down three after three after three in the shoot around. There's one to keep his team up by six points in this, points in this game. And what was he doing so wide open? Nice take. Oh, they pinned it right against the glass and the iron. Nice face up, jab right, baseline take by Matt Barnes, draws the foul. He's so good at this move, going left. And Dixon going to get him with the body. And the ball stuck. Matt Barnes, who is a 58% foul shooter, will have one more. Greg Clark will now come in for Thalo Green. But to Grant Lee, who knocked down that, that three-point shot, Steve, out of Mount Vernon High School. They have a great program of the Mount Vernon. I've watched them play the last two, four years. They've got a point guard by the name of Josh Reisman going against Zaga, who's going to be a good one. But they need some more scoring from Grant Lee today. UCLA trying to put the run on the Huskies. They have cut it to five with 9.45 to go. Huskies by five over the Bruins. Weekdays at five o'clock on Fox Sports Net. It's Preps Chicago Hoops, an inside look at the Chicago high school basketball scene. Preps Chicago Hoops weeknights at five o'clock right here on Fox Sports Net. Be sure to check your local listings. Well, how about Preps Seattle Hoops? Washington must recruit better to keep their athletes in state. I mean, what if the kids who went elsewhere, who are from the state, stayed home? Brian Scalabrini, Casey Calvary could have been the front line with Curtis Borchard, who went to Stanford. Send Q Carey transferred to New Mexico, and Dan Dicka, who's having a great year at Gonzaga, could have been the point guard. They have an excellent recruiting class coming in, and also a transfer by the name of Doug Wren, who started at Connecticut, who's just tearing up your practices every day for Bob Bender. And he's a local Seattle kid also. Jeffrey Day, a big 6'9 kid who's very athletic, very soft hands around the basket. So there is uh, some hope there. Errol Knight, who is many consider to be one of the best players in the entire country, also coming here next year. Anthony Washington. But Knight, they say, he is the team of the top. Charles Frederick, who is a wide receiver. Rick Newhouse, who is also an excellent point guard from Florida. That will give him on loan. I hope he's as good as Ronald Curry for North Carolina. Curry, the quarterback for the Tar Heels as well. Ray Young had made a 
up his mind as the ball was coming and he was going to turn and drive on Greg Clark and Clark can only foul him along with David Dixon. Watch this catch and go by Ray Young. And you know Dixon I, I thought positionally couldn't have done anything different. But still gets the foul. Yeah, these, these, these two sport guys can really help you. Uh, Tao Johnson from Stanford, very good player. Julius Pepper from North Carolina to go along with Ronald Curley. Ronald Curry. Tell you, Ray Young, you look at him, he could be a yeah. fine wide receiver for Bob Toledo. Yep. For a strong safety. You can feel his hits. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a Tony Gonzalez type, another great two sport. Star excelling at both football and basketball on the, on the collegiate level. And Bruins back in their pressure, not as aggressive, more of a man to man, show you pressure, get you a little tentative, get you a little hesitant. Try to knock you off your aggressive posture. Dixon inside, just powering it between Capono and Gadzura. He catches the ball that deep, not too much you can do, but just get out of the way. He is a wide load who just naturally creates a lot of space for himself. Wow. That's a turnover for the Bruins on the illegal screen. Here's Dixon. Seal. Look at the seal. Seal, good target inside, and Capona, all he can do is just, hey, it's like I'm not taking that hit. And that is the 21st turnover by UCLA. They had 14 at the half. The most at the break since the Cal State Northridge game way back in early December. And this was a UCLA team that did not start well. They went four and four. But that is when, in the second half of the North Carolina game, Steve Lavin said, We are going to try the full court press. And they came back from, what, 20 down to almost beat the Tar Heels, and they stayed with it. And they have won 17 of 20, and they've got a chance at a number two seed, but that would quickly evaporate unless they win this game. Watson blocked again. Ray Young. Charging, yes. Completely out of control, but again, the, the positive for UCLA is there's still a whole lot of time left. They're not playing smart basketball right now, so they've got to do a better job of that. Is Ray Young going to get the shot after the block and just barrels into the big fella David Dixon? But if they just play a little smart basket, a little smarter uh, basketball, they could they could pull this game out. Bruins 21 turnovers, season high 24 against Northridge, and of those 21, I would venture to guess 16, 17, or just of the of the, the non-force type, just just bad passes, poor decisions. And the Husky back pressure. Greg Clark misses the three. David Dixon fighting for it. It is tapped to Barnes. Here's Capona, left side. Whoa! Three misses. Matt Barnes grabs it and is fouled. Don't mind that three. You don't mind that three by Capona, especially with the way he's shooting the basketball today. And then you've got good rebounding inside his Capona. He's going to pull it. A little bit in front of the logo, but watch Matt Barnes outleap Greg Clark for that offensive rebound. And then Clark with the hack. But that's that athleticism and, and the length of arms that you talked about, Steve, with Matt Barnes. He's got a great timing, too, going to get the basketball. What are you, like a wide receiver or a quarterback? He's one of the best in the nation as a senior in Sacramento, California. Matt Barnes went to Del Campo. Not only scored 30 points, 10 rebounds on the basketball floor, but caught 58 passes for over 1,100 yards and led the nation with 28 touchdowns his senior year. Yeah, but you can see the timing going after the ball uh, with that wide receiver experience is definitely him on the basketball floor. Michael Johnson missing the three. There's Barnes again, but he can't grab it, and it's pulled down by Dixon. Like the Hillberry passes in the end zone. Barnes is right there going to get it. Thalo. <laughs> Washington's lead back to nine. Just like that, the Bruins had cut it down. It looked like they were on the verge of making a move. And every time they make a move, Leap knocked down a jump shot when they got to within three. This time it was Stalo Green. The lefty long-range bombers for the Huskies are coming through. Both teams must be the Seattle slide for UCLA. I mean, Washington has beaten a ranked UCLA team in Seattle in each of the last three years. What is up with that? No matter how poorly the Huskies are playing, how well UCLA is playing at the time, the Bruins just, not, just cannot come away with the W. But, I mean, we're, you know, 
Down eight, eight, just under eight minutes to play, plenty of time. But the momentum had shifted back in favor of the Huskies. Green with four fouls is taken out for Will Perkins, who has four fouls. But Thalo Green, with one of the best games in his career, knocks down the three and puts the Huskies up by seven. UCLA down by seven points. If they're to win, they've got to solve the interior presence of David Dixon. Yeah, Dixon doing a nice job at both ends. Right here, just going to eat up the shot by Moose Bailey. And then nice seal, nice catch. Get out of the way, big fella. Coming through. And then a nice feet inside from Michael Johnson. Good hands on the catch and finish. And David Dixon having the game of his life. Five of six from the floor. 13 points. Six rebounds. Perkins back in playing with four fouls, and Billy Knight will defend them. There's the steal. Watson has it. Fires ahead. Matt Barnes. Wow. Blows the layup. Watson forgot about Johnson. Michael is blocked by Gazirik, but Dan will pick up the personal. I think Steve Lavin is just hoping this is a wake-up call for his Bruins. Well, but there's plenty of time to get it together. But I thought Matt Barnes is a little bit of a selfish player on his part. He had Billy Knight out ahead, didn't pass him the basketball. And then Michael Johnson had cruel intentions on his mind. He wanted to throw that down, but Gadzirk wouldn't allow it. Third foul on Gadzirk. Johnson pushes the lead to eight. And it seemed as if the Huskies were about to tire Right around the nine-minute mark, but at this point, I think it's about all about second win for the Washington. That's a new career high for Michael Johnson, 24 points. The opponent is fouled. But in a game like this, kind of racehorse basketball up and down, a nine-point deficit is nothing. Especially when you have a three-point shooter like Jason Capono, spot-up three guy like Billy Knight on the floor. But you've got to do something defensively at the other end. That's been a problem for UCLA all game long, that and turnovers. And you just talked about it. Michael Johnson, career day. Thalo Green, terrific ball game. David Dixon averaging about four points a game. He's got 13 in this game. And when you let, look at where they have come from, from the 4-4 start, it has been the defensive turnaround on this team. Yep. Perkins drops it into Dixon. Dixon is walking with the ball, so UCLA within seven can get a little closer. And remember, right now Dixon has four fouls, Perkins has four fouls, and on the bench they look green with four fouls. About to strip a gear on that play, trying to stop him. You get that big and you're moving that, that quickly, you try and pull up. All of a sudden, bad things happen. Billy Knight. The three-point shot I was talking about. Deep corner. Looking at a five-seven point deficit. Billy Knight usually comes through and knocks down that open shot. Inside seven to go. See, this is where a team that has struggled all season long. Now all of a sudden they start to question whether or not they can pull this kind of a game out against the number 13 ranked team in the country, UCLA. This is what happened for Washington State against UCLA this past Thursday. Cougars led by 11. UCLA kept cutting into that lead. And the result was a 16-2 run in the last five minutes of the game. Johnson says not so fast. 26 for Michael. But again, at the defensive end, UCLA has got to tighten things up, especially against the scores. That's Johnson, that's Perkins. Capono. There's yes. a 15 footer, yeah. That was the first one a little earlier. Fake Michael Johnson out of position. He looked to shoot the three pointer. This time, faked him out of position, shot the leaner from 15. That's a good decision by Jason Capono. Capona with two strong games, the Pacific Northwest, 28 Thursday against the Cougars, and 21 so far against the Huskies. You got to keep Michael Johnson out of the middle, force it baseline where your help is. Bruins in their matching zone, switching everything out top, any kind of screens. Huskies content to be patient and work down the shot clock. It is right now at eight seconds inside Perkins. He spins in, knocked away, Gadzilla. Back up, it hit the arms, so they get a new 35. It's out of bounds to Washington. A good defensive play on the interior by Dan Gadzilla. First time he went after Perkins, shot, he blocked that, caused him to miss the second shot. This Perkins right here, gonna spin on Barnes, Gadzilla. 
blocked it. He can't control the rebound. Clark, Perkins, Dixon, Johnson, Ryan Brown on the floor. Only problem I have with that block, maybe they have to sit a swing it full force and just maybe try to just stop the basketball and, and, and control the possession. Clark throws it away. See now, this is again, you know, this is a bad team. Down at the bottom of the Pac-10, playing the game of their life so far today. But the problem is trying to sustain it. Clark, let's see if he tries to take Dixon. Right on the glass and in and Steve Lavin thought he should have gotten a three-point play and Dixon's fifth foul. I thought a good no call. I think Matt, I thought Matt jumped into Dixon. Dixon was already there. Dixon is so big. When he's not there, he's there. Barnes with 19. Greg Clark with the left hand beats Jason Capono. Little flex cut on the right box. Capono gets caught behind, caught trailing the offensive player. Pays the price. Billy Knight right into Dixon's defense. Perkins comes up with a loose basketball. Brown caught about the three, then backs out. Inside four and a half to play. Good decision by Brian Brown. I want to force things up. You've been able to get some good shots against this UCLA defense for most of the game. Motion, making it work. I look at Capono trying to match up against Perkins. Is an advantage in your favor if you're Washington. Greg Clark with the air ball. That's not what you want. But there were three seconds in the shot clock. Yeah, yeah you're right. You just have to know who to give it to. Yeah. He, he, he had to shoot that, but he's not the guy you want with the ball in his hands in that situation. Especially as hot as Michael Johnson has been. He was a fine alley pass, though. <laughs> and alley, oops. Yes. Michael Johnson's the guy you want. He's been the hottest guy. 26 points, a career high, and the 26 is a season high for the Huskies. Prior season high was 25. C.J. Massengale at Pauley Pavilion against UCLA. Capono sneaking inside. Dan Zurich. Capono is fouled from behind, and if that's against Dixon, it is. good night, David. Good night. Did a great job working the offensive glass by UCLA. I mean, that was uh, just activity in the purple. A standing ovation for David Dixon, who fouls out with 13 points. A real force in the middle. He'll be coming back next year. They bring in the senior, Green, who has had a Terrific game as well, but Green also has four fouls. Well, that gives you something you can build on, but here's Capono, going to penetrate. A lot of contact, no foul call. Ray Young flies through the air with the greatest speed. Gadzirga right there, nice job. Doesn't get the shot to fall. Capono, click off his feet. Draw off the foul, no chance to cut it to this lead. Capono with 22, so he has 50 in the Pacific Northwest this weekend. 23. Timeout on the floor. UCLA coming back. They've cut it in two against the Washington Huskies. At one time, UCLA was down by 11, but good things have happened when Jason Capono has had the ball in his hands. Yeah, very good things have happened. And right here, Capono does a nice job catching it on the move. A little half-hook finish, and then Matt Barnes finds it deep corner to Powie. And then Jason Capono screaming at Zurich, a little fake and step in for the 15-foot jump shot. Just a pure shooter in the truest sense of the word. 23 points, his career high is 28, tied that in his last game at Washington State. And nine rebounds, so he's made a, an effort to be a better rebounder this season, and it has showed in the stats. Young in the game, defending Michael Johnson, their top scorer. Young, of UCLA's best defender on the perimeter. And Matt Barnes is their best defender against Thalo Green. Green misses, Perkins tried to tap it to a teammate, Capone has it. Matt Barnes open on the wing. A good decision to pull it out. They're telling what Matt Barnes might have done 25 feet away on the right side. But now you got Perkins trying to guard Gad Zurich. You got to get Gad Zurich the basketball inside. Oh, bad pass by Barnes, but Young gets it back. Young for three. No. He's a 22% three shooter. That's not the shot they want. Green has it. What a 
blown opportunity for UCLA. Barnes with the foul. Terrible decisions. That shot by Ray Young. I mean, he's trying to make the big play, go for the home run ball. He's no got need to realize that. Yeah. that he has Gadzurek, Capono, and Barnes on the floor. What do they average combined? About 45 points? And into a nice flow. He hasn't played enough to be into that kind of flow to take that kind of a shot in that situation. Just a reminder, coming up immediately following this game, most of you will see the Women's Big 12 Tournament Championship between number seven, Oklahoma, and number 13, Iowa State. Clark drops the free throws, the lead back to four for the Huskies. Inside three to go. And even after that, Earl Watson gets the offensive rebound, and he throws up kind of a wild shot trap. Oh, I thought that was a trap on Watson. They call the foul on Bryant Brown. The girl got away with one. Like he got a rolling start out of the blocks. Third foul on the senior Brown. Brown with the arm bar in the back. Let's see. If, uh, well, uh, it's supposed to be called in the low yeah. block this year. Yep. You wouldn't know it from watching all these conference tournament games from the Big East and the SEC and the ACC, but mm -hmm. supposedly a point of emphasis. That's what I understand. So we talked about it at the beginning of the year. Oh, Watson has not had a good basketball game. Nope. Two of eight from the floor, eight points, seven turnovers. He has not had a typical Watson type game. There's downtown Freddie Brown. His lovely wife is there. Look at this son, Bryant's final game as a college player. Another son, Tariq, also with the school here. No, he went to Oregon. Oh, excuse me. Also from Seattle is what yeah. I got to say. Another brown son in the Pac-10. My bad. And the foul against Jason Capona was upset with himself. But for those alums back in Southern California watching this game, you know, going, why couldn't they have gotten up for this game? I'm sure the same alums all over the nation at Michigan State, at Cincinnati, at Wisconsin, at Illinois, at Iowa State, at Fresno State are feeling the same way. Yeah, you're right. This is a weird time of the year. And, and yeah, and that's <laughs> getting ready for the dance. Exactly. Trying and the, on the slippers. And the teams that, you know, that, that have already pretty much got their, their stake in the dance have a tendency to let down at this time of year. Teams trying to prove something like the Huskies here trying to stay out of last place, playing for Pride, Senior Day. I mean, they are sky high. But that is no excuse for UCLA. They're a much better team athletically, and they haven't shown that here today. Billy Knight back in. He's their excellent three shooter. There's Capono. That's a good play. He hits. That is a good play. Instead of going underneath the screen, Capono slices off the top of the screen. The screen is rubbed his man off. He gets a nice look at the basket. UCLA within one. Bruins trying to steal this game. Perkins inside Clark. Clark has it blocked by Barnes, but they say Barnes got too much with the body. This is good offense, though, by UCLA. Watch Jason Capono. You're going to see him slice off the top of the screen. Grant Zirk picks off his defender. And Jason has a real clean look at Steve Lavin. Just like I drew it up. Oh, I don't like that foul by, by Matt Barnes. Greg Clark is not what you call a score. I mean, 13 points today, that's a career high. That proves my point, even though he does miss the free throw. But you know, he was in a bad position. I don't think he would have made that shot. Whatever he would have threw up there was, was not going to go in. Clark, a 65% foul shooter at one time in his career at 35%. and was so bad one season, he tried two left-handed. Didn't make those, so he went back to the right hand. Clark with a career high, though, at 14 points. Two career highs against the Bruins. One by Johnson, one by Clark. Can the Bruins take care of the basketball? That's my question. There, there. There's the same play for the Pono. Watson got fouled. No basket, they say the foul was prior to. Had it gone in, it would not have counted. That's a good foul by Brian Brown. He was beaten badly on the play. There's really no choice but to go ahead and just grab from behind. But that's the same play for Capone. You see him slicing off the top. Earl ball fakes his way, gets Brown out of position. But Brian Brown, smart, smart play. Fourth foul on Brown. Green playing with four. Perkins playing with four. Two by Washington top.
89, 89, 144 left. And you put the Huskies in a situation where they've got to make a big play offensively, something that they have not been able to do for the majority of this season. And UCLA has dropped that press. Smart move because it was not affecting the no. Huskies. The Huskies were actually thriving offensively when UCLA was pressing because they were knocking down that outside shot that presses when they try and go through the takers. But a 1 4 flat it out for Brian Brown. Johnson. Short. Gadzilla grabs it. Get numbers if you go. The boys get the server. Last UCLA lead was 26 25 with seven and a half to go in the first half. The Husky fans are up. Green tried to go for the flop, get the offensive foul. Will Perkins, great defensive play, but Matt Barnes stayed with the play. Timeout. Washington. 45.4 seconds remain. UCLA with a precarious 91-89 lead. Matt Barnes got it down low and broke the 89 tie. Slash down low, got the basketball. There's that flop, not going to get called. Good block. By Will Perkins, but Matt Barnes would not be denied. Well, it has happened before. The last three years, UCLA came in with the higher-ranked team and lost last year. The alley-oop to Dion Luton. Luton would go deep outside, then for three, and the Huskies would lead. UCLA had a chance. Jason Capono had to make a three. They were down three. His foot was in the line. This counts, but it's only a two-pointer. His foot on the line, and Washington upsets the Bruins 63-62. They need a three for the lead. Thalo Green comes back in. Green already with one terrific game with 21 points. His teammate Michael Johnson with 26. Last three have all gone the Husky way. Bender trying to somehow gain that 10th win of the season as they close out the year 2000-2001. And a reminder after this ball game, most of you will see women's Big 12 tournament championship between number seven Oklahoma and number 13 Iowa State. So stay with us. And that game a couple of years ago in 99, I think that was a game Lavin went ballistic, I believe, and got tossed and that the Bruins lost by 10 that game. So put a lot of emotional a lot of emotional stuff going on up here in Seattle. This game is, is no different. It looked like the Bruins were just going to give this thing away. All of a sudden, they start battling back. Bruins have three timeouts left. Washington with two. There's a help ball. UCLA will have it. One four. Flat it out for Brian Brown. They got a shot for Michael Johnson. The last time he could convert. Brown. Downtown. team in the game long enough they start believing they can win right here is the kick out pass to get three feet behind the line and Earl Watson gets called for the foul but Brian Brown great concentration got that stroke just like his daddy had just like his brother had when he played for the Oregon Ducks Tarek, Tariq Brown and Earl compounds the mistake by the contact on the shot Brown only a 46 percent foul shooter amazing that kind of release. He lost a lot of weight this year. He changed positions, played the point guard position until the freshman, Allen and Mazagel could get a little bit more seasoning. He gives him a two-point lead. He knew that was going in. Hawk is pleased. Timeout UCLA. Well, you've got a red-hot Capono for the Bruins. You've got Matt Barnes, who has a load inside when he posts up. Where are you going? When you got Gad Zerk, you got a lot of options. You got the ball in Earl Watson's hands. I like that play where they run Capono off the top of the screen, going to the left side of the floor as you're facing the basket. He got a couple of nice looks there. But it'll be interesting to see Matt Barnes flashing from the left high post down into the right box. They got some good stuff there. But Steve Lavin, a lot of choices from which to 
too. The only reason I don't like Cat Zurich's call is because he's a poor foul shooter. Well, to find out all the latest news and happenings in the Conference of Champions, log on to their official website at www.pac10.org and get up to date on all the schools and their sports in the Pac-10 Conference. And just a reminder, ticket information for the upcoming 2002 Men's and Women's Pac-10 Basketball Tournament is also available online, so log on and check it out. And the thing I like about Brian Brown, Steve, he had about three or four, maybe five open looks from the three-point line during the course of this game, but he was patient. He pulled the ball back out, and then his patience paid off for him. He got that shot to fall at this point in the game when this team needed it most. The seniors have played well on senior day. Clark 14, Green 21, Johnson 26, Brown made that last three. Again, if there's a held ball, UCLA will have it. Let's see what the Bruins decide to do. One four set again. They've got Watson. Swings it to Billy Knight. He is. Where you going back to Billy Knight? That's going to call a timeout. Washington takes their final. What a game. We came into this facility tonight, Marcus, thinking UCLA was going to be big on Washington. The Huskies had not played well, lost eight in a row. UCLA wins nine of their last ten. Here's Watson inside, flipping it to Billy Knight and the guts of the kid. Yeah, and, yeah, and, you know, taking another look at this, watch the catch, Earl Byron Watson, and then the pass. He had to, like, extend his arms almost out of bounds to wrap it around the body of Greg Clark. And Billy Knight is usually a lot more effective in the right corner. This time he spots up in the left corner. That's usually Capono's corner. But Billy Knight did a good job of bearing a big-time pressure shot. He is really coming through with a lot of pressure. Billy Knight is for UCLA over the last month of the season. Shot clock is off. What will Bob Bender go to? He's got Green and Johnson, both of that career games, but Brian Brown just fired one in from 28. Whatever happens, it's going to be a senior that makes the play. They've got, they've got the five seniors that started the game on the floor right now. Way to go out on a limb. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we know, what I'm saying, they're going to finish <laughs> yeah. it. Like, we're going to yep. finish it like we started. We started with the five seniors. We're going to finish it with the five seniors. One of these guys is going to be the hero for Bob Bender tonight. Or the GOAT. Again, coming up after the ball game, we have Oklahoma against Iowa State, the Women's Big 12 Championship, so please stay with us. Steve Fiziak, Marcus Johnson with you in Seattle, Washington, as UCLA trying to survive against the last place team in the Pac-10, Washington. It's 94-93. Billy Knight, who hit his fourth three of the game, now it's 16.6 seconds left. We'll go back on defense. Knight on the floor instead of Ray Young. But I love this by Bob Bennett. Just give your seniors a chance to, to do something special in their lifetime. A lot of these guys won't ever play any basketball organized on any level again. Brown got it inside. Clark and swung away by Gadzirik. Bob Bender saying, where is the goal oh. Dad, Dad, what are you doing? 3.6 seconds left. Perhaps the official thought it had no chance yeah. of getting near the iron. It might have been way short, but you don't even want to take a chance in a situation like that. Remember what happened with uh, Lauren Woods earlier in the season, goal 10 of the shot. Against Connecticut, it's Connecticut. and UConn won. Yep. I mean, a lot of people said it wasn't goal 10, but just to go after a shot like this, you know. Ah. Oh, I don't know. Then Clark almost traveled on the play. Kind of tough from that angle, but uh, I mean that was a chance by Ken Zurich, and he was fortunate that he did not get called for the goal in it. 3.6 seconds left. The way UCLA was defending, Brown was deep outside, and Watson was was actually playing soft in. Yeah, trying to protect the inside. So with that, what kind of leads you to believe is that there is an open jump shot out there for a Michael Johnson or a Thalo Green. Gad Zurich will fill the middle. Greg Clark will inbound. Now Watson plays a little deeper. Michael Johnson.
career game on his last time competitively on this Washington floor. Michael Johnson. And right there, Michael Johnson gets the screen from Will Perkins. Capone a little late switching out. That's all the time Michael Johnson needs. Bottom. And just bugged by his teammates. And I like to see them. Again, this is a kid that uh, is one of the most decorated, if not the most decorated high school player in Washington basketball history. Had had a great career here at, at the UW, but boy, is he finishing with a flourish. 29 points for Michael Johnson. That's his career high. Thalo Green, a senior with 21. Greg Clark, a senior with 14. Johnson has seven assists. UCLA, what can they do with 1.1 seconds yeah. left? Well, I mean, you, it's desperation time, obviously. I mean, you, with a little bit more time left, you can throw it to midcourt and call a timeout, but I don't think you, you don't have enough time to do that. All you have enough time to do is pretty much catch it and, and shoot. shoot. But, I mean, when you throw the long pass, usually what happens, you get a gang of bodies that deflect the basketball, get the clock started, and you wind up not getting a shot. Steve Levin needs Christian Leitner right here. And remember the Soviets in 72. Yep. Barnes, terrible pass. Washington upsets UCLA. Washington, losers of eight games in a row, beaten by an average of 20 points per game, beats a UCLA team that was running very well to the tournament, gunning for a number two seed. This loss will cost the Bruins. Yes, it will indeed. And Coach Lavin said that it was, this was like a conference tournament. Well, it sure is because all the big-time powerhouses in conference tournaments, or a lot of them have, have lost games. But I like what Bob Bender did. He gave his seniors a chance to shine on this stage. A nut shine brighter than Michael Johnson on that last play for the Huskies. 29 points for Michael Johnson. So for Marcus Johnson, I'm Steve Biziak saying so long from Bank of America Arena where the final score, 96-94 Washington. And just a reminder for all of the day's scores and highlights, don't miss the National Sports Report. Good night, everyone.